Hello everyone. So, I really like this Thunder Tiger EB4S2 Pro. I think we all know that by now. So I've got some little things to give it a little bit of a treat. We knew that it needed new wheel bearings. I think the back one's slightly worse than the front. But I've got some new bearings for it. And what I've done was I had a look around. Well, before we go into that actually, these two receivers came all the way from Canada. They arrived yesterday. Um, came all the way from Canada, from Jay's RCs or JP's RCs. The link to his channel will be in the description, so you can go and have a look. He does some pretty cool things over there. And he decided, oops, that probably doesn't work anymore. And he decided, doesn't want these anymore. And he said, do I want them? I said, yes, please. Brilliant. And there we go. So I'm going to put this one probably in the drifter, in the drift car. This one's probably going to go in this, one of the Savages, probably the SS, but we'll see. I'm slowly getting there, transferring them all over to Futaba. But these are the bearings that I got for the uh, EB4. I went to a little place called RC Bearings. RCBearings.co.uk. They do all kinds of bearings. Oh, I've got a little sticker as well, that's handy. They do all kinds of bearings for all RC cars. Well, at least all the ones I've ever needed bearings for, they have them. I've never had the bearings for a Thunder Tiger before, but they should all be the same sort of type. And I bought a kit. So this has got every single bearing in it that I need for this buggy. But I'm not going to change them all now. I'm only going to do the wheel bearings. Um, and then if I find any other bearing that's a bit dicky, I'll change that one. But I'm not going to change just bearings for the sake of changing them. If they need changing, I'll change them. If they don't, I'll leave them. So, let's have a look. In the kit as well, you get two clutch bearings. So, but I think the ones in my clutch are okay. But you get two clutch bearings and you can choose either metal or rubber shielded. I chose rubber for the other bearings because... Rubber tends to be better for like off-road. If you're going to be going on a lot of tarmac and a lot of, well, there's not a lot of dirt involved, metal ones probably be better. But the rubber ones seem to keep the dirt out a lot better. And they're pre-lubed, so you haven't even got to lube them up. You just put them on and away you go. Let's start taking this apart and having a look and see what we've actually got in front of us, shall we? Now, you can do, well, you can do this with, the knuckles still on the buggy really all you need is a pair of pliers um, and an allen driver it's a two and a half mil allen driver and all you need to do is take the act take the take the wheel off take the little grub screw i'll show you on the other side of a minute i'll show you step by step i should have shown you step by step for this one but i've done it and i thought to myself oh you about i should have showed them anyway so you take this off it's gonna have a bit of a clean as well you push the pin out there's the pin and then you can push the bushings out and on the original they are just bushings they're not bearings really they're just bushings they're just if they're copper or brass probably copper um they're probably brass i don't know what they are um but they're just bushings and they're in there um what what i had done the foot the front one came out um but the inner one was a bit it wouldn't come quite out so what i done was lean it up against the bench like that got a punch and a small hammer and just put it in there like that on the bear on the bushing and knocked it out through the back. And there we go, we've got the two bushings there. They're the original ones, and you can see how they are. They're not that bad. They would have lasted a lot longer. There's nothing wrong with them whatsoever. They're all gonna get a bit of a grease up, a um, bit of an oil up in the axle, and here is the new bearings. These are actually proper ball race bearings. They're gonna go in place of the old ones. So this should roll a hell of a lot better than it ever has ever before. So it's just a reverse procedure, put them in, happy days. Now you've got to do the other three. When I get to the other side, I'll take you through step by step. Now, <coughs> there's a, a bit of dirt in there, and a lot of rubbish in there, just grease and dirt that's accumulated over the years. It's good to get that out before you put the new bearing in, just so you know you can get it seated properly. Um, so what I normally use, um, I've got this particular one, I've got different ones, I've got different cans of it, different bottles of it, it's all the same sort of stuff. Clutch and brake cleaner, get a bit of that, spray a bit of that in there. 
this stuff will just clean absolutely everything. Bit of brake cleaner, an old toothbrush, look. Get that in there, scrub that in there like that. That should get all the dirt out of there. Like that. That's looking a lot cleaner in there now. Um, that'll go all the way through as well. That's perfect in there now. A little bit of that just to wash it through. Absolutely perfect, look at that. Perfect in there now. Good nice for better than that. There we go. Just to give it a bit of a dry, we'll get another bit of fine, another bit of an old baby grow here, look. Let's get that in there. Just to dry it out a little bit. Now, I don't personally put any oil when I put these bearings in. Um, maybe a little bit if I need to, if they're really tough. Because you want this part to grip on the inner part of the knuckle because obviously the the, the the bearing that's supposed to go on there you see and that's supposed to spin like that and if this is lubed up too much and let's just say that's not quite a tight fit you might you might get the outer part of the bearing start to spin as well and you don't really want that you want the inner part to spin and the outer part to grip on the inner part of the knuckle so I don't usually put any oil unless they're really really tough so let's put that bear in there we might have to use the vise to press them in but we'll see we might have to take the knuckle off or we might not no nope, that one's gone in that one went straight in there lovely just what I wanted now let's give this a little bit of a clean a little bit of brake cleaner Brake cleaner does no harm, unless you get it near rubber seals and things like that, then it won't be any good, but we'll give this a bit of a clean off. This is absolutely brilliant now, fantastic, couldn't ask for better. And this is the axle, give that a clean, All right, give it a rub round in there, get all the dirt off. Um, it's always, I always like to, when I take things apart and repair them, I always like to put things back clean and tidy, you know. There's no point in repairing something and putting it back all horrible and greasy and dirty, you know. The surrounding things haven't got to necessarily be cleaned, but it's good to clean what you've taken apart, in my opinion. And these are all in perfect working order. There's nothing wrong with these whatsoever. What I'll do is I'll give these a bit of oil. In fact, I might even do it now. Uh, let's use a little bit of three-in-one oil. A little bit of oil in there. I'd probably normally do it after, but just for the sake of you viewing a lot. A little bit of oil in there, look, on there. Because this is a, a moving joint, and it needs to be free, and it needs to be lubricated, otherwise it will wear. And we don't want it to wear too much, do we? So give that a little bit of an oil up. It's probably good to grease it up, but I haven't got any grease to squirt in there at the moment. But there we go. Nice bit of oil. And usually... I oil these every now and again, you know, when they're actually on the car, you just squirt a bit of oil on because they're easy to get to. So, we can put that back in there now. And we can get that, we'll put that in there first. And we'll put that in there. Like that. Happy days. That's all the way through. And all we've got to do is put the rest of it back together. Which means putting that on there, finding the two holes, making sure they line up, getting the pin, pushing the pin back in there like that, getting the little grub screw, which come out the end of it. That goes in there. Putting it on the end of your Allen driver. You could put a bit of thread look on there if you really wanted to. Um, I don't normally thread lock them, um, but you could do if you wanted to. Just get you get a, your pair of pliers or a spanner if you've got the right size. Just make sure they're quite tight, they ain't got to be too tight. And then all we got to do, get that uh, link back down there. It's probably not going to want to go on there, but we'll try. No. It's going to be awkward because it knows I'm trying to film it, you see. <laughs> it 
knows I'm trying to film it, so it's like, no, I'm not going back on. Why would I want to go back on? That's all you've got to do. I'll just go and get a bigger hammer. That done the trick. There we go. Now, obviously, you can get a big pair of pliers if you've got a pit. Well, I've got a pair in the thing. I could have used them. That go on the bottom there, on the top, and just squeeze it together. I'll probably use those for the other four, a uh, three. Um, but you can use a hammer. You don't need any special tools to do this. And now we got new wheel bearings on this side. Let's put this wheel on, and we'll see. We'll compare. We'll, we'll compare the wobbliness compared to the other side. Well, at least we would if I could get the wheel on properly. There we go. Look at that. No wobbly now at all. Now, if I put this nut on and do this nut up, the only, that wobbling is in these links. It's not in the bearings at all. Now, this one. Sorted that bearing, but this one you can see it's in the steering link there, needs a little bit of attention. But that is a hundred times better, and that should roll a lot better than it ever has before. Now the back ones are slightly different from the front, obviously because the front you've got the steering, on the back you haven't got any steering. So what you've got on the back is, well it's just it's a straight joint isn't it obviously. Everything's still the same, you've still got to take the little grub screw from inside there and you've got to push the pin out. By the way, this 2.5mm um, Allen driver is the perfect size for pushing that pin out because it will go all the way through. I've lost the hole now, I've already pushed the pin out. But it will go all the way through there and it will push that little pin out perfectly. So that's a little good little bit of a information there for you. Take that off. And then all you got to do, you can use this. If you've got one of these, this is the perfect little tool. You get these with most little RC cars. You always have done for years and years. This one come with the, um, the rush because it's one for the wheels. So this little spanner I've got here is over 20 years old. Perfect, and then you've got a two mil allen on this side, a little bolt on this side 
5.5 mil bolt, a nut, sorry, not a bolt, it's a nut. Undo that, get that nut off the end of there, get that bolt out of there, and then you can just take that apart like that. And then there we go. That comes out of there like that. A little washer on that side. And now we've got our bearings. And all we've got to do is get them out. Sometimes bearings can be a pain to get out, and sometimes not so much. This side weren't too bad. These aren't worn anywhere near as bad as I was expecting, given the amount of play on them. I thought they were going to be a lot worse, but they're not. They're reasonable little bushings. But we're replacing them for proper bearings instead of bushings. So. We're doing a good thing regardless of whether it needed to be done or not. I mean, there was a lot of play in them. Um, I still think it was worth doing. These are plastic on this side, not plastic knuckles on the other, on the front. But that's all right. Clean, give that a good old clean out. And then all we got to do is put it back together, but with our new bearings. I'll take two of them out of the little tube. And we'll put one in the back. Like that. One in the front. Like that. Take a little bit of brake cleaner. And clean this up. As soon as we've had it apart. Oh, the little washers have had it, look. Little washers are just falling apart, they're so thin, they're not any good, so I'm not putting them back on. Some of you probably say, we need them, well they ain't having them, simple as that. I mean, look at these ones, they're so thin, they're falling apart. So, you know, if you're like, well it needs them, because otherwise this and otherwise that, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Well, that ain't going to happen this time. So we're going on without them little washers. I don't think they're necessary anyway, um, given that we're putting these bearings on that are sealed bearings and any uh, dirt and whatever else shouldn't get into them. So I'll put that on there. If anything, the back is actually easier than the front because you haven't got that little connection to try and push back in. Oh, let's give that a clean. That's a little bit dirty, that is. Let's give that a little bit of a clean up, a little bit of a jolly up. Uh, brake cleaner's good for everything, man. It really does. It cleans everything you do. Car breakers, a lot before a brake cleaner. Oh, that was a missus. Dinner be ready in five minutes. So let's hurry up and get this done. So that goes on there like that. That little pin. Let's give that a little bit of a spruce up. Stick that in there. I'm doing this on a Saturday, um, Saturday afternoon. I had a spare sort of half an hour so I thought to myself let's go and get these bearings done on this EB4 I like this EB4 proper taken a proper liking to these Thunder Tigers over the last few years oh I think I've just discovered I've just discovered another problem there so we'll be taking apart that diff in the next video and try and find out what that problem is there it's in the centre diff, whatever that problem is. So we'll be taking that apart in the next video. Because that shouldn't be spinning like that. Now, for those of you that watched another video where I was driving this around, and we intermittently lost four-wheel drive, and then it would come back, and then it would go, and then it would come back, and then it would go, etc, etc. Um, I think it's something to do with that, so we'll have to take that apart and have a look. And we'll get this, uh, we're going to get this EB4 running absolutely perfect again. It's going to be like it was brand spanking new. It's not going to be as clean as it was brand new because, well, as you lot all know by now, I'm not really one for cleaning RC cars. I don't like to get them dirty. And when they do get dirty, I'm just like, well, that's how they're going to stay. It's kind of the way that I was brought up, you know, and the environment that I was brought up in. Things 
on farms and whatever else, you know. Things that get dirty, stay dirty. And that is the way the cookie crumbles. Let's put that back on there. Happy days. Now what I've got to do is do the other back one on the other side. And that's wool bearings done. I can already hear some of you, by the way. Um, I know some of you are going to say it. You're going to say, well, you don't need to take that little grub screw out the middle of the um, axle there just to get it all apart. But the thing is, it all depends on what you want to do. Um, I like to take the little grub screw out because I like to make sure that it's all right in there. As soon as I'm taking this area apart anyway, I like taking the little grub screw out giving it a little clean up in there as you've seen me doing just 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 that's really the only reason um, you now I take this little pin obviously you've got to take the pin out in order to get the thingy off but just give it all the clean up you know sometimes take a few extra things apart and just give them a bit of a clean up Dad. Minion's calling me now Dad, Hello. Food ready. food's ready yeah. right, I'll be back in a minute now <clears throat> it goes without saying that if I was doing this, I suppose, properly, um, I would also be replacing these. That goes for the front and the back. The reason being is because these aren't actual bearings. So this goes on there, and then that spins on there. There's going to be a certain amount of wear on here. This is obviously going to wear more, that's the whole point of it. Um, this is made out of a material that will wear a lot faster it's a lot softer than the mild steel that these are made from <clears throat> but still now that i'm using actual bearings if i just get one out and that goes in there like that what you want is a little bit of play there all along really <clears throat> now what you want ideally is this to be quite a tight fit on there like that so the inner part of this bearing that you can see in there what the shaft goes through you want that to grip onto that you don't want it to be spinning inside because obviously that's the point of the bearing the bearing itself is supposed to spin if it's not gripping because the shaft is too small it's defeating the object of the bearing and you're going to get wear on here even more and it's just not going to be a smooth ride for the bearing having said that you know these don't look awful but i'm not on a budget where i can be just changing every part for the sake of it i was changing the wheel bearings just because they were pretty bad so i thought to myself Let's give it new bearings. And there, by the way, you can see the end of the grub screw. <clears throat> In there. Just see the head of the grub screw poking out there, where I've just loosened it slightly. You don't need to take it all the way out. I've left it in there to prove that you don't have to. The point of that is, when that pin goes in there, what happens is the grub screw then pinches the pin and stops the pin from coming out. That's the point of this little grub screw that goes in there. But you don't have to remove it completely, you just have to loosen it enough so that you can get the pin out and get the pin back in again. So, there we go. All four corners now. Properly and fully changed. Well, I say properly. Probably not properly. See that that diff's working properly now. You're probably just about to see in the bottom of the thing there. The wheels are spinning properly, whereas earlier on they weren't. So something's not quite right in that diff in the middle there. We might take that apart in the. Uh, I might do it in this video. Won't we'll see. Let's get this back together and uh, see what we're doing. That can go in there. That goes on there. 
it's always a good sense of um, satisfaction when you've oh wrong one when you've um, you you've mended something. You know, it doesn't matter what it is you're mending. If you mend something, there's always a good sense of satisfaction, and you're like, yes, that's bloody good. I, I like that. A little bit of oil on them because they are moving parts after all. I should have oiled that one before I put the wheel back on, but I didn't. These are, because obviously these move up and down when the suspension moves, as you can see there. So a little bit of oil on there will just prevent any excess wear on there that we, we certainly don't want any more excess wear than is absolutely necessary. So I've rather quickly just whipped out the diff the center diff of this buggy just to see what was the problem there why it was gripping and then all of a sudden it wasn't gripping anymore i wonder if that little grub screw in there might be the culprit but i've noticed as well that the bearings here these are metal bearings and they're slightly loose so as soon as we've got a bearing kit and we're able to replace these bearings while we're here i think we'll do just that we'll just take that bearing out of there take that off of there take this apart and replace these oh, replace these bearings here while we're at it sounds like a plan to me so i know you can't really see because there's cars in the way and all that but if i zoom in you might be able to see a bit better there's not really a lot to the diffs in these you've got the, the spur gear here which goes on there that's just held in by a little shaft it's a square shaft and it's got a grub screw on the other the other side of it that um it attaches to and then you've got the brake where the brakes live uh, there's a bearing in there so we'll take that out and put a new one in there I thought there's one on the other side there might be might have to take that out and have a look at that um, but that's just the brakes so I still don't really know why it was slipping or skipping or whatever you want to say it was doing but um, we'll get this bearing out we we'll probably have to take the brakes apart is that the right one for taking the brakes apart? No. Gonna need a different size. Where's my other size? It's gone. On my uh, Allen drivers all over the place. Let's just quickly take this apart and then we can see what's what's what in there. I think we're gonna have to take these off anyway. Brakes generally aren't my thing. I don't really like brakes on any on any car or on any anything at all. But sometimes you just have to do what you have to do to get things to work properly. Uh, the, the pads ain't too bad. The disc isn't too bad. The brakes weren't all that good actually on this. So you know, there might be something worth looking at. But we'll uh, give all this a clean up while we're at it. There's not a lot to it whatsoever. There's a little grub screw there, still in its little slot where it would live, and you just tighten that up on that thread, and we'll. Uh... Huh. Interesting. There we go. I knew we'd get there eventually. So there's a little grub screw there. You do it up through there, and it grips onto the shaft. And that's how we uh, get grippage. There's a bearing. So let's take that bearing out. Just push it out of the uh, driver. We push it out of anything. There's the old bearing. I need to make sure we keep the old bearing separate from the new bearing. The last thing we want to do is put a new bearing, an old bearing, back in, thinking it was the new one. Just gave it a little bit of a clean up with some brake cleaner. New bearing. Straight in there. There it goes. Brand new bearing. Now let's see, this all could do a bit of a clean up. I'm pretty sure that that's not supposed to be bent like that. Um, I might have to, I might straighten that out while I'm at it. Stick that in the vise and straighten that out. It's a little bit bent, that's just the lever for the brakes. I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be bent. So I'll straighten that out, somebody might have bent it on purpose. Um, but we'll see anyway let's get this back together so there's one fully rebuilt center diff if you could 
Oh, it's not really a diff, is it? Because it doesn't really do anything. It does. It just attaches the spur to the brake and then carries it on. Really, it's like a brake unit. <laughs> All the grub screws are tight. All the bearings have been changed. Oh, there is a little bit of play on the shaft. That's just because that shaft is worn. If I was doing this properly, I'd buy a new shaft as well. But I'm not. For this little brake rod that's a bit bent, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this out of this little housing, undo that grub screw, and now we can see the little rod that's bent. There'll be some of you now shouting at the screen saying, it's supposed to be bent, that's how it's supposed to be. But normally they're straight, so I'm literally just going to go and straighten that out. I'm going to stick the end of it in the vise, give it a good old straighten, and uh, put that back in and see how that runs. Well, it's not all I've done was put it in the, the jaws of the vise, um, put it straight in there, done the vise up, and that straightened it a bit better. It's not perfect, it's far from perfect, but I think it'll be better than it was. So let's put that back on there. I'll have to adjust it later on anyway, because it'll probably be the wrong length. I'd have to adjust it, but that's something that's easily done once it's back on the buggy. Oh, I put it round the wrong way. I don't need to undo that and put it round the other way. Anyway, let's put that around the right way and get this diff back in. And I'm intrigued to see how well it runs. There we go. That needs to be a bit shorter. Otherwise it'll end up hitting that spur. There we go. Alright, let's put it back in. I'm intrigued to see how well it's going to run now. Luckily enough, for someone who's not as, you know, perhaps if you're not very confident taking your buggy apart, doing all this kind of stuff, changing the bearings, even having a look at the brakes there, doing the, the centre diff and all that stuff, really easy to do, really easy to get to. All you got to do is take these four bolts off, four bolts at the bottom uh, undo the brake linkage and the center you know the center diffs is out um that's it you've got it in your hands the wheel bearings you saw me do the wheel bearings they're nice and easy i wish wheel bearings were that easy on real cars <laughs> let me tell you that now real cars it can be a right pain on some of them you got to press them out and funny around and do all sorts of stuff at least with RC cars, things are a lot easier. But hopefully now, I mean, I reckon personally, I think the problem's in the front diff, because if you noticed, um, I think was it the front? Yeah, I think I was spinning the back, wasn't I? And it was getting as far as this. The the centre wasn't spinning, but the front wasn't. Um, so I reckon there might be something either a grub screws come loose. Or maybe the little gears, but the thing is now, if I hold the back wheel, look, I'm holding the back wheels, and they're gripping nicely now. So whatever the problem is, it can't be stripped gears in the in the front diff because if they were stripped, they wouldn't be gripping like that. It's an intermittent problem, which makes me think it's probably something to do with a loose grub screw on one of those diff. Some people call them diff cups. Um, we'll find out. I'm not going to take that apart today. I've got other things to do today. But we've certainly got quite far in uh, the restoration of this little buggy. I'm probably going to. I'm probably going to just adjust the brakes now and get them to to be working properly because I've messed around with the linkage overnight, so it's going to be going to be all cock and wrong anyway so let's play around with that for a bit so these these are all the old bushings or bearings whatever you want to call them i call them bushings because they don't actually have any moving parts to them they're just a solid piece of metal uh, they're not actually as bad as i was expecting them to be so i always keep old bearings these are all ones old bearings that are i've taken off of things over the years i sorted them out recently because i had some bearings in there that were actually no good whatsoever um and these are the ones that come out the center out of the diff 
they're actually not that bad um, they, they are worn but they're not bad bad so they can go again you know if something needs a bearing it's half decent they can go again so always keep stuff like that never throw anything away that's half good um, you I've noticed as well um, well you may have noticed that I've got this is a foam these are um, Losi foams I've got a packet of them um, to go on the other air filters they don't quite fit they're a bit too small because the the outer foam is supposed to go over this lip but the inner foam and the outer foam both fit and they both seal nicely um, when they go on the inside of it so I've just put this old one on there for now because it's a lot better than the foam that it came with and the air filter that I had on this in the last couple of videos I wanted to use that on another buggy so I put an old foam in there it looks dirty and stained but it's just stained it's not dirty I've, I've cleaned it it's just stained so that goes on there nicely once I get around to it I'll get because this is a genuine Thunder Tiger air filter it's the one that it would have come with when it was brand spanking new so I'd like to get the proper foam for it so I'll, I will look up the proper foams and I'll get a proper foam for it so that it looks the part again one day um, but for now that'll do the job more than perfect there's old RCSOS's battery that he sent me <laughs> I noticed he must have broke the wires at some point because it's got heat shrink over those wires but that's alright it's a battery and it works that's all that matters um, nice now we've got a perfectly working Thunder Tiger EB4 S2 Pro um, as far as the intermittent diff problem goes I'm just going to wait until that completely goes and then I'll be able to find out what the actual problem is sometimes that's just the way it goes you know you you might have an issue and you think oh I wonder what that is and then it fixes itself and if something's working properly you've got no way of really finding out what the problem is because it's working um, you just have to kind of let the problem develop and once it's developed properly fully developed and it's now an actual fault an actual it's broken down you can see what's broken and you can repair what's broken so for example if I go out and use this and all of a sudden we lose front wheel drive we've got rear wheel drive but we lose front wheel drive and we lose it permanently oh no the problem is in the front diff vice versa front and back but for now we just lose it randomly and then it comes back by itself so I'm just going to wait for that to develop so there we go really nice I gave the shell a bit of a clean and a polish up the other day as well really nice EB4 and also I don't think this would have been the original transmitter it would have come with um, anyone who knows what these came with originally let me know put it in the comments of this video what transmitter and what radio gear would this have come with it might have come with the Jaguar who knows but I've given this a bit of a clean I need to get those um, little cotton wool buds um, and a bit of time to get all the dirt and dust from in there but I did give it a bit of a wipe over and it's come up quite nice it's a shame the back's broken but it's quite a nice little transmitter that one so if you like that kind of stuff stick around loads of this sort of stuff always going on on this channel and if you need some bearings for any of your models and you decide to go to RC bearings Tell them that uh, you see it on my channel, and uh, that really helps me out. That bearing kit weren't even that bad. I think that was about £14 for that kit of bearings, and that's every bearing you need. It doesn't include engine bearings, obviously, mains and things like that. No, I don't think it does. I'm pretty sure those bearings won't fit as mains on that engine. You'd have to get bearings for the engine, I think. I, don't, I might be wrong, um, but they don't need replacing anyway. But yeah, if you, uh, if, you, if you need anything like that, it's always nice to get a kit because then you've got all the bearings you need. You can change the ones that need changing and then in the future, if any more need changing, you've already got them. Next little project is this virus. I've got to put this together. Um, I need to get a couple of servos, <coughs> flywheel, clutch, and a bell, and an exhaust manifold. Um, and then this will be put together and it's going to be a, a little... Um, well, a little present for a friend of mine or a family member that uh, wants to get into nitro so we're going to put this together for him with that nice engine that engine was taken apart and sent to me in bits and I've got it going again 
be a nice little buggy for him. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember, love life, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio, you lot. All the best.